What the f What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about a film that came out last year in France and is officially making its way over to the States this year and that movie is called she is Conan. Written and directed by Bertrand Mandico, this film stars people like Elena Lowenson, Krista Thurrett, Julia Riedler, Sandra Parfait, and many more. And before we get into my thoughts on this movie, let's go ahead and hear a word from today's sponsor. Whether you're trying to get yourself in the right headspace for the day, maybe you got a lot of stress going on in your day-to-day -day life, or you're like me and you do not have a good sleep schedule, you're going to want to try out the sponsor of today's video, and that is Hemp Honey. They use all natural ingredients, no GMOs, no artificial flavors, infused with their hemp extract to give you a various amount of products that can give you different forms of alleviation for your specific needs. Me personally, as I mentioned, I don't sleep all that well, so I've been trying their Hemp Honey Sticks, the sleep version, which these are great. You can literally ingest them right out of the stick itself you can put it into your coffee into your tea whatever the case may be and i'd like it because it doesn't make me ever feel overly drowsy or anything like that but instead once i've actually fallen asleep i'm having far deeper sleep waking up feeling far more rested and the kind folks over at hemp honey are giving you guys the chance to get 10 percent off of your order over on their website by following the link in my description box down below and putting promo code perez 10 at checkout again a big thanks to hemp honey for sponsoring today's video i really appreciate it so before before we get too far into this review, I want to go ahead and clear something up for anybody who's confused by the title. Of course, I put 2024 because this film came out last year in France. It had a limited theatrical run in the summer of last year and officially in the fall or closer to the winter actually ended up having a full on release in France with a slew of other appearances at various film festivals. But I'm counting it as a 2024 release because it's just now on February 2nd of 2024 coming over to the States with a limited theatrical run and I'm assuming shortly after will eventually start to trickle out places where you can rent it or, or purchase it digitally and maybe even physically who knows so yeah going into this one I was really interested in it firstly I saw that it was filmed on 35 millimeter which is always something nice to see in the modern day when so many films are filmed digitally not to say that there aren't incredible films that are filmed digitally but it's always nice to see a movie that takes the original old-school craft of filming films and brings that to a modern film on top of that it's a gender swap telling of the Conan the Barbarian story and of course at this point whether it's live action movies or various cartoon adaptations video games or comic books we've had tons of stories that have given us the Conan the Barbarian story on screen and so I'm actually surprised that it's taken this long to get a gender swap version of that story with this iteration not necessarily being Conan but being Conan and which does work for the fact that this film is mostly in French now the film does have segments of the film that are also in English so it's kind of cool that the film bounces between French and English throughout the course of the film now going into it with that knowledge I just saw the poster I had nothing else under my belt in terms of knowledge on this film I didn't even watch the trailer going into this and so something about it just seemed like it was going to be a more artsy approach to the story of Conan the Barbarian and so the movie actually starts off and you have Conan kind of going through her life and we start off when she was younger when her mother is murdered right in front of her by a group of barbarians that she is now taken hostage by and now she kind of has to become a barbarian herself to actually rise in the ranks of this world of being a barbarian and throughout the course of the film comes in contact with new iterations of herself played by a completely different actress at a different age who will end up eventually killing that past version of herself to now take on the mantle as the current Conan and that was an interesting thing going throughout the course of this film because every 15 20 minutes or so you have a new actress taking on the mantle of the lead role still continuing the story that we've been following definitely intriguing definitely different and in a lot of ways this film has its own unique stamp on being a conan the barbarian film and i want to start off with my biggest positives for this film which mainly lead into the production value of this film as I mentioned, the film is shot on 35mm, which is always nice to see. On top of that, it utilizes a great slew of practical effects, locations, makeup, costumes, and most of everything you see in this film is shot and caught in camera, which is always incredible to see. As a big fan of horror and anything that can really capture a lot of really great practical effects on camera, I'm always interested to see when a filmmaker can bring that to the light and bring that to a movie like this. Now, while this isn't a horror movie, though, this is a film 
film that has a lot of blood and guts and gore and they definitely utilize like i mentioned a lot of practical effects that are caught in camera that gives this film its own tangible vibe now one of the most notable things about this film as well is that it's very theatric not only in its performances but also in the fact that a lot of these sets that are built around these moments feel like you're watching a stage play that's just being shot more cinematically, leaving a lot of the sets to not necessarily feel like real locations, but more so like a surreal, almost dreamlike kind of sequence, which gave this film its own unique identity. The film also jumps between color and black and white throughout the course of the film, which oftentimes lends itself to that artistic vibe that I've already talked about here. You add that in with all the practical effects and everything that was shot on camera and the fact that it's shot on 35 millimeter, and you have a film that just feels like it was very hand hands on when it comes to the filmmaking. You can tell that there was a lot of passion and energy that came from all the people behind the camera to make it look as good as they possibly could on camera while giving this film its own artistic and very theatrical vibe, which I thoroughly really enjoyed. As a fan of film, as a fan of filmmaking, visually I thought the film was really cool. It had its own unique stamp and I think it's easily one of the most unique looking and feeling Conan the Barbarian tales that we've ever had on screen. With all of that said though, I was unfortunately not a fan of this film when it came down to its narrative, as a lot of the story for me just felt like very, very self-indulgent. If you will, it felt like the film kind of was smoking its own supply, if you will. It just never felt like a story that I could ever latch onto, or a story that I could ever really tell somebody else to go watch. This film, while it is a very loose retelling of the story of Conan the Barbarian, in a lot of ways, it's more of its own thing. And it has some messages in there that I felt like I was able to take from it about aging and about kind of killing our past selves to become a new iteration of ourselves. But in a lot of ways, I gotta be honest with my own personal kind of outlook on this and say that I felt lost a lot of time throughout the course of this film. A lot of the dialogue felt overly poetic and not necessarily in a way where you could walk away from the film, kind of looking at the various things that they would say and kind of feel like there was a lot of metaphors and symbolism throughout the course of the film. But instead, a lot of it just had me scratching my head and it just felt very overly self-indulgent. It felt like the movie, like I said a second ago, was just you know, using its own supply, smoking its own supply. It just felt like something that was trying to be overly artsy and overly intelligent and overly clever that oftentimes just left me feeling dull and bored throughout the entirety of the runtime. And all of this kind of pains me to say because like I mentioned, I thought the film was really interesting to look at and the visuals of this film and the very over the top theatrical performances that were very well committed by all the actors kept me engaged. I kept hoping that 15 more minutes, 20 more minutes, I was gonna find myself pretty invested in this story. But by the time we got to the nearly two hour runtime of this film, I just felt like it was absurd, bizarre for no reason, that it had some semblance of a message in there, something you can kind of take from, something that was there to kind of grab onto when it comes down to metaphors and symbolism and some sort of themes that you can take from the film. But quite frankly, by the time I got to the end of the movie, I was bored to tears. I was struggling to get through this movie. I was struggling to care about any of the characters. And this isn't a Doctor Who kind of situation where you fall in love with each iteration of the Doctor but then he regenerates into a new actor and you kind of find yourself falling in love with that version but it's still the same character so you're still loving the doctor but you're you know falling in love with this new iteration played by a new actor throughout the course of the film if i ever did like an iteration of conan that we're following throughout the course of the film not too much longer into the film, we'd have a new actress playing the character that would completely reinvigorate who the character was, and it oftentimes led me to not really caring about the progress of this one individual character. By the time we got to the end, each iteration of Conan feels so different and it's so jarring that I missed previous versions or I just didn't care for majority of the versions. And as a through line, as a story, as a narrative, there was never really something that I found myself latched onto or a character or character development that ever made me feel excited. On one hand, I appreciate this film's non-conventional approach to telling a story, but on another hand, I feel like it kind of bit itself in the ass and I just hate to be redundant here, but again, it just felt like it was just so overly self-indulgent at times. It felt like it was just 
you know, smoking its own supply. It just felt like it was too high on itself, on trying to be clever, on trying to be artsy, on trying to be weird and bizarre. And while I appreciated a lot of the over the top elements when it came down to practical effects and costume design and the really theatrical performances that were all given by very committed actors, I just ultimately found myself just bored to tears, wondering what the film was trying to say, consistently scratching my head from all the very overly poetic dialogue. And by the time I got to the end, I just thought to myself, <laughs> I'll never watch this movie ever again. And it's not something I can sit here and talk to my viewers and say, yeah, you guys should definitely go and check out She Is Conan. It just did not work for me. And I, I wish it did because I was so impressed by the filmmaking. And I think there's going to be a percentage of the audience that loves the filmmaking so much that they give this film a pass. I just unfortunately am not going to be part of that audience. I thought it was very well made in a lot of ways. I just thought narratively and character wise, the thing I care for most in any film, it just didn't have anything that really saved this movie when it came down to story, which is for me what makes a film have lasting, lasting life. It, 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 you want a story that you can connect to, you want characters that you can connect to, you want to at least be able to follow a narrative that excites you or scares you or keeps you engaged. And this film just did not do that for me in any way, shape or form. So I do apologize if I was a little redundant there at times, but I just was struggling to find words for a film that ultimately used a lot of words in its dialogue to seem so clever, but oftentimes just had me feeling like it was just too self-indulgent. So a big thanks to you guys for watching. Definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Have you seen She Is Conan? Is this a movie that's even been on your radar? Have you even heard about it? Or if you saw the movie and that's what brought you here to this review, let me know down below. Did you like the movie? Did you not like the movie? Whatever the case may be, I definitely want to hear what people have to say about this one. I went on Letterboxd just before reviewing this and saw that it has fairly decent reviews on there. So I might be in the minority on this one, but I'm okay being on the minority on this one if I'm completely and utterly honest. So that's my thoughts, guys. Definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. So comment down below, hit that like button, and subscribe for more early movie reviews and just movie reviews in general here on the channel for more videos in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.